Hello, this is Randy Wooden, and this is From the Wooden Desk. I hope that uh, you can take a moment to tune in to our last episode of this series we've entitled Emotional Leadership. Our desire is to have emotional leadership, as long as it's emotionally intelligent, as long as it's emotionally spiritual, and it's emotion that is operating out of a place of purity rather than all the other emotions that can at times um, cause the atmosphere and cause your lives to literally be sabotaged by many of the negative emotions that we've talked about in some of our past episodes. But our desire in our last episode here is to finish up this area that we're talking about simple steps to disarming what I call the bomb of negative emotions. We talked about the very first one in our last, as we were finishing up last time, and number one was realize that all emotion begins with a thought. So again, it is coming to a place of realizing how important it is for our thoughts to be pure and let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. And you might say, well, that that's easy to do. Well, it's not always easy because I believe it means you have to have the discipline of medica meditation in your life. And I've, I've used the... The thought is if you have healthy meditation, it becomes like daily medication that is able to heal you and bring healing into your life. And I really realized that that many a times in some of the leadership venues and scopes of staff and senior leaders, that because of some of the unhealth in their emotion, there needs to be healing. There needs sometimes we become so hurt and devastated by some things that happen in ministry or in an organization through people we care about. And sometimes people leave us. Sometimes people say things that are not true. And, and, and we have to take that on. And what I realized more than ever before is that in a practical way, we have to realize we cannot allow these things and even own the things that are wrong that can cause us to become very unhealthy in our emotions. So as we were finishing uh, this whole thing of the anatomy of what I call the anatomy of our emotions, we begin to get in on how to disarm that negative emotions. And so that area first, that first area is get rid of those negative thoughts. Get rid of those negative mindsets that you may have experienced and are, are wrestling with on a continued basis but allowing you to move into a place of, of health. As we use the scripture in, in Philippians 4 and 8, where we talked about the area of those things which are good and excellent and good report, to, to think on the right things so that we can begin to process and begin to reproduce a life that is going to be in control of our emotions. We need to fall out of love with our emotions. We've said that over and over, but I think that is so key to being a healthy leader. The second thing I want to talk about is talk to your emotions rather than letting you or your emotions talk to you. I'm going to say that again. Talk to your emotions rather than letting them talk to you. Whether it's facing, you know, down anger or fear, rage or revenge or depression or whatever it may be, you have to fight back. You can't allow it to take over your life. For example, tell your anger. You've run my life long enough. You've given me ulcers. You've raised my blood pressure. You've, you know, you've made my face contort. I mean, you, you need to be insistent and, and be rude and selfish and tell, literally tell the anger, you're not going to have a place in me any longer, but rather you're going to begin to take control. Then finish that thought with, I can control my emotions. I react to with kindness, with love, not anger. See, I have patience. I have understanding. I have a cool spirit. You see, as simple as that sounds, you can overcome the habit of falling into negative emotions by deliberately, I believe, and intentionally making a choice to speak to them in a matter that will diffuse them. You might say, well, that's... Silly, well, you can call it silly if you want, but I've had to do it in my own life. 
And I've just simply said, no, you can't. You're, I'm not going to allow that. Again, that goes back to the scripture where it talks about in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 4th, 5th verse, where it talks about taking every thought into captivity. That thought saying, no, I'm taking you and I'm putting you aside and I'm diffusing you and I am going to speak life over an area rather than allowing that emotion to speak death or to bring about death in my life. I think this is very important. Number three in this area is pray. Now, that may go without saying, but I think Mark 14, 32, and 33 give us a great illustration here that Jesus, when he was with his disciples, went to a place called Gethsemane. He was prayerfully considering the sacrifice that he was getting ready to make to go to the cross. And he said to his disciples, sit here and wait with me or wait and pray. The Bible says that he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he thought that, uh, you know, he, he, he without a doubt was struck with what I call sadness and, and torment and fear and depression, but he never sinned in any of these emotions, but there's no doubt in my mind he faced them. Maybe like Jesus, you're in Gethsemane right now. And you might say, well, what do I do about it? Let's look and see what Jesus did when he resisted the temptation of his feelings. He didn't want to have to take the cup and to go to the cross and to face the torment that he was going to have to go through. But the Bible said in the 35th verse there, it said he went forward a little. When you're struck with the frustration and the sadness of those emotions that sometimes come against you as a leader and as an individual, we're tempted to go backwards rather than forward. Maybe into depression, we'll go backwards and we'll go into emotions we shouldn't go in and we have a bad habit that we go back into. But perhaps we can choose to move forward a little bit. Sometimes it's not always the big steps. You know, I always say that sometimes you just have to have a first down play or a baby step in order to get to where you're going. Even though you might feel that you can hardly move. Maybe you could uh, just simply say, no, I'm just going to move a little bit forward. I'm just going to take a step and move forward. The Bible says that Jesus fell to his knees and onto the ground and he prayed. So can you, so can I. We have learned so many times that we need to have, to, we have to be healed of certain areas in our life but God still does the healing. And you may be listening to me and you know that because of all that you've been through, you may say, but I have a right to these feelings or I have a right to these emotions. And I'm not saying that they're not real. And I'm not saying that what happened to you was right. But the emotions that are accompanying many a times to being offended or being hurt or being betrayed that happen in our lives or even in our leadership cannot take rulership in our lives because they will lead us in the place that is not pleasing. One thing I admired so much about David, the story of David when he was being sought by Saul because of jealousy and David continued to escape the grasp of Saul's basically relentless, basically trying to kill him and one day has the opportunity to take Saul's life. And of course, his soldiers and some of those closest to him could not understand why in the world did you not take his life when you had the opportunity to? But David said, I would not touch God's anointing. But I really believe what David was saying is that if I killed him or if I done him harm, I would become just like him. Sometimes if we're not careful, the hurt and the difficulty that we've experienced lead us to a place that if we allow those emotions to run their course, we will become just like those people. Bitter, offensive, having an agenda of the enemy. And I realize there are things sometimes that there are agendas that are set against us and demonic assignments that are set against our lives. But we cannot respond the way the enemy responds. 
we have to pray. This is what Jesus did. He said, pray that you not enter into temptation. That's what Jesus did in this story. And what I realized is he went a little bit forward into God's purpose for his life. There's always going to be a temptation to be led by our emotions or to be led by other people's emotions. But we cannot react. We have got to go to prayer. And many a times it's there we receive strength and we're not led into the temptation of our emotions. Number four, I think it's important if we're not going to allow the negative emotions to run, we have to have faith. That might go without saying, but I'm going to say it. We have to have faith believing that we discover this area, the power of belief that all things are possible and that we have the confidence in God's promises to overcome the negative emotions that are in our lives and to feel brave and the bold to be able to overcome them. Nothing is going to defeat you. I love what Jesus said to his disciples when he was getting ready to leave. In John 14 and 1, he said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Yes, we do have control over our emotions, and we do not have to allow our hearts to be troubled. I think this is so important. And it comes from what we believe and believing in God that he gives us faith. Maybe it's time to redeem the faith that we have and say, God, give me fresh faith again for the journey. I have been hit and all of it just seems like it, it's not so much of my belief and my faith and the simplicity of my faith out of my life. Let it be redeemed today and allow the calmness to come over these emotions that have arisen in my life. See, and so it is that not allowing our hearts to be troubled, listen, and not allowing our emotions to control our life are the twin secrets to what I call turning emotional bondage into emotional freedom. And then number five, walk in love. Walk in love. Remember that the most formidable opposition many a times to any negative emotions is love. In the worst force, many a times, in the worst times, sometimes it's hard to muster up love. That's why it has to come out of the spirit. Yet the most powerful force in the universe is love. First John 4 and 8, I love the scripture. Perfect love casteth out fear. Fear is an emotion. It's not real many of times. It's not to say there's things we should not have fear against. We shouldn't do certain things. We get that and especially the fear of God. But I think it's very important to realize that no matter what emotion comes, love is able to, to disperse that in a way that makes a difference. Since fear is the root of all negative emotions, then love is the answer. And when we know that we are loved by God and express his love towards others, our fears, our anxieties, all of these areas, I really believe will begin to melt away. I believe that when we begin to take these negative things that have come against us and we add love and we add faith and we add the ability of having the right thought processes behind them, that things begin to change in the atmosphere of our own lives. And especially if you're the one doing the leading, if you're the one who is at the desk and you are at the helm, so to speak, of the shim, trying to lead and navigate, you cannot do that with negative emotions. Negative emotions will lead you where you don't want to go. See, I believe using these tools that we've talked about will is ultimately that you're not any longer going to be so, I believe, drawn into the dark deception of these emotions that we talked about. And I believe that you will emerge out of a place of powerlessness and you will become powerful and your hearts and your minds will begin to begin to be what God has called you to be. Proverbs 25 and 28 says, like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. I don't want to be that kind of man, nor do I believe you want to be that kind of leader. But rather we want to be like Proverbs 16 and 32, where it says, better is a man who can rule him, his own self than one who can capture an entire city. 
I really believe when we fall out of love with negative emotions, when we start leading in a place of healthy emotions, it is going to make a difference and it is going to become contagious in our entire organization. And what I realize so many times is when we allow even others around us to lead with those negative emotions, many a times they are going to become toxic and they are going to be the barriers that keep us from the growth that God has ordained for our lives. So I would say let us get victory in this area of being self-controlled, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and what? Temperance, self-control. Yes, we have the ability to rise above our feelings when at times we're ready to explode or allow them to consume us. I believe that we have got to, as I said earlier, we have got to have this awareness. And that awareness is that, you know, though trouble comes and it will come, we will not allow it to come into us because that's what happens. Instead of us allowing it to go over us, or protect ourselves, so, so to speak, with the armor of God against those emotions that are negative. Rather, we take control and we take authority that God has given each of us. Well, indeed, these feelings create pressure many a times that are based on outside circumstances, maybe a financial difficulty, a physical pressure, a marital pressure, a job pressure, whatever it may be, so many times we need to turn the valve of the pressure off instead of throwing it open and just letting it rip. So that's it. because that's what happens with individuals and that's how we lose the ability to lead. If we're going to lead with competence, if we're going to lead with enthusiasm and we're going to lead with a momentum of the Spirit of God, it can only be with healthy emotions. Remember, as I mentioned earlier, all negative emotions come from a sense of powerlessness. Isn't it true that one of the reasons we get so upset with our spouse, our friends, a member, a coworker, whatever it may be, it's because many a times we want them to do something we want to do, but they won't do it. But when we feel powerless to change them, or to get them out of the way. We resort so many times to negative emotions of manipulation or on and on anger. But we have to try many a times to realize we have to move away from that area of wanting to control things and saying, God, I need help. You've got to control it. I'm not going to be a person of intimidation. I'm not going to be a person that uses manipulation. I'm not going to use those in my work environment, but rather I'm going to ask God to bless them and leave the results to him. That's real power. Real power is realizing God's given it to you, but it has to be exercised and releasing it the way God would release it. God made you to be superior, to be a champion, to be a conqueror, not over others, but over yourself over your own emotions that force, many a times tries to force to control you. So today, I really believe a decision needs to be made in each of our lives. Is, are we going to be led by our emotions? Or are we going to be led by the Spirit and be led by a leadership, sense of leadership that is going to be healthy? Every one of us knows what toxic leadership looks like, or we have maybe been in that environment at times. And sometimes we've allowed it to happen, and sometimes it has hurt us. And then it takes time to get past the hurt and the damage and all that has happened in, a, in, in and through leadership. Why? It's because people are involved. And when people are involved, emotions are involved. And when emotions are involved, many of times they have to be put into check in order for us to lead in a healthy environment. So I pray that this lesson in this series has been a a help to you where you're at in your leadership walk. I encourage you to feel free to reach out through email, through a question, or just even a prayer request as it deals with this area, because I believe it is an area that many leaders get off course, or they're caught with many people around them that are so emotional that their unhealth affects them. 
to have healthy ministry. Well, if that's you, reach out to somebody else. Get the help you need because you're not in this by yourself. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now that you will give an awareness and a spiritual wisdom, God, to leaders that may be listening to this or individuals that say, I need to change. I'm tired of being reactive. I'm tired of allowing emotional people around me to pull me down or allowing my own emotions to cause me to lose it. And I'm asking today, God, that you, Lord, will arm individuals, God, with what they need, God, as we shared some of the key points through this whole series, that without a doubt, God, that it will be one of these lessons, God, that will help somebody to get up and turn around and to make a change in their lives. I bless them today, and I thank you for the time we've had. Bless them in all they do, in Jesus' name. I pray that God bless you and that the kingdom of God will enlarge in you and around you. God bless and have a great day.